Hello everyone and welcome back to Age and Agash, which is a channel dedicated to Age of Sigma. And in this video we are going to be continuing my Why Play series and in this particular video we are going to be talking about Why Play Flesh Eater Courts Delusions. So this is the first Why Play I've done on a sub allegiance. That's not actually about a sub allegiance because this is the way to play Flesh Eater Courts without picking one of the Grand Courts which are their sub allegiances. So this one is a little bit more different. So if you haven't seen one of my Why Play videos before, essentially what I'm going to do is go over the strengths and weaknesses of playing either the army or the sub allegiance, or in this case, the delusion of the Flesh Eater Courts. So this will be things for if you've already got a Flesh Eater Court army and you're wondering which is the best way you should play it, or if you're thinking, should I play Flesh Eater Courts? I have actually got a Why Play video for Flesh Eater Courts, so make sure you check that one out as well. But this will maybe help you for when you're starting your Flesh Eater Courts of what model should I buy to maximize my purchases, etc. So we're gonna go over the law, and then we're gonna go over the strengths and weaknesses of playing Flesh Eater Courts without sub allegiance and going for a delusion. To be honest with you, the delusion is basically like the fifth sub allegiance if you would like to, or the first sub allegiance, depending on how you're going to read the book. So it does work as in that play, but it doesn't force you in taking a command trait, an artifact, that sort of thing, so it gives you a lot more freedom. Which is why at the moment it is my favourite way to play Flesh Eater Courts. So I am quite excited to do this and I have a particular build that I use by using the Delusions or the Flesh Eater Courts. And I have actually got a list on my list building video I did Flesh Eater Courts talking about a list with the certain delusion called Feast Day which we'll get to in a moment. So if you would like to find out a bit more details about list building go check out my list building video Flesh Eater Courts. At the end of this video there will be some suggested videos for you all pop up on the screen and one of them will be my Flesh Eater Court playlist or you can find Flesh Eater Court playlist on my home screen of my YouTube channel and with all that extra information aside before we get into the meat and bones of this video I do want to do a massive shout out to my biggest supporters here on Asian Agash which are going to be my patrons and my YouTube members because of these people I can continue doing this channel as they justify to me the time I put into the work I do here for my videos and my top supporters are going to be my Morgar so this is going to be Jonathan H Philco, Bleed Red, and Christopher G. They're all beautiful people. Thank you so much for your huge support of that tier. My vampires are going to be Mir, Martin S, Rouse321, David A, Ronnie H, Doug P, and Spare Bear as well. At that tier, guys, you're really helping. Thank you, and please give it up. And then my Necromancers, which is Jack L, Ray Nation Riley, AW77, Dice Sagas, Wolf Nick, Michael W, Quad, Cranky Wombat, Krista F, Krista C, James S and Steve T. Thank you all for your continued support there as well. If any of you like to support the channel, go check out my Patreon, link to it at the top description down below, or click the join button to become a YouTube member next to the subscribe button. And I can talk about more about that at the end of the video. So going into this video, the first thing I talk about is the law. Now, picking your own delusion means that there's not really any law there unless you make it up yourself. Without me just going into all the law flesh at your courts, just to let you know, I have done many law videos for Flesh Eater Courts, so you want to check those out. And I have done a summary of their law on the Why Play Flesh Eater Court video. So something I'm going to do for this one is a little bit different. So a while ago, I did a video on how to create your own law. And you'll see I have a link for it come up right now at the top. And then also it'll be in the playlist for my Flesh Eater Courts, so you can check it out there. But what I did in that video is talk to you my law for my death army and a big part of it was my flesh eater court. So what I'm actually going to do is sort of just revisit that now for you guys today. Instead of just saying delusion, pick your own law, do whatever you want with it and then just move on. I think it'd be nice to give an example because I know sometimes when I'm trying to come up with law for things it can take me a little bit of a while and then I hear like a little bit of inspiration and it really helps to jog me along creating the law I want for the army because if you have a lot of nice law for an army, for me it really encourages me to actually firstly build and paint it and then I really do enjoy playing it on the table knowing that I have a story behind it and a narrative. And I could go into loads of details about my death empire but a basic description of the story is there was a large order kingdom long ago in Shaiish that was attacked relentlessly by the forces of Nagash led by Neferata. The forces of order had retreated to the capital of their kingdom where they made their last stand but inevitably they lost, their surviving armies had to go through the ever winter realm gate that stood in the centre of the capital. The realm gate led to the frozen mountains of despair that are in the north of the kingdom and after going through the realm gate they destroyed it to ensure the dead could not follow. 
The battle-tired armies of order lost many of their own wandering through the mountains of despair. They were in need of strength and power to help them, to be able to destroy the undead who had taken everything from them. Sigma had not answered their prayers since the fall of their kingdom. It was when they lost all hope that they discovered a shrine that had an inscription on it that spoke of great knowledge to defeat the undead. What the soldiers did not realise is once they had spoken the inscription, they had given their will to the great deceiver who placed the shrine there. Over a thousand years, the once loyal armies of order that had fled to the mountains had slowly corrupted and mutated into worshippers of Zeech. That they are today, the only thing they can remember is their hate for the undead that dwells in the kingdom to the south of the Mountains of Despair. It had been a thousand years since Neferata had taken over the once order kingdom and had renamed it her Imperial Empire of Pure Blood. Neferata did not kill all the living inhabitants in the kingdom, but instead spent the thousand years that passed slowly enthralling them so that they will now die for the Imperial Empire Pure Blood and their queen Neferata. They now also believe that the chaos in the mountains of despair, who were once their own fellow order people, are their main enemy and must be destroyed. Neferata had sent the 14th Human Infantry Regiment to the mountains of despair to hunt down and kill the Zeech threat. However, the 14th Regiment had suffered from huge attrition in the mountains of despair and had resulted to eating the corpses of their Zeech enemy. This slowly started to mutate the regiment into the flesh-eater court that they are today. Stuck in the mountains of despair in an unending war against chaos. And that is a bit of lore for the history of my death empire really. It's one of the things, in case you've seen it come up before in old videos, where I had like an iron cross and a blood drop on it. Essentially the iron crosses represent the empire from the world that was. Because when I came up with this lore, it was the early days of Age of Sigma. So everything was still very wild and you had loads of free room to come up with what you want to. And you still can. But anyway, so I used the iron cross from the empire from the old world. And then the blood drop was Neferata, the Mortarch of Blood, overlapping and ensuring her dominance on this now captured kingdom. So with that, I like I said, I could go loads more into detail, but I think just a nice little summary and mainly about their history. Because what you'll find out a lot about fleshy Courts is when you read into their law for the Grand Courts, a lot of it's about the history of what they were and how they are now. And that's something I really enjoyed with coming up for the law of this, because when I actually came up for the law, I had a small Zeech Slayers of Darkness army as well. So it was basically given a story that united my models in terms of conflict, because they're all based the same and everything else, which I thought was really quite cool. And then it explains how this once, you know, professional standardized regiment turned into these flesh eater court that we know today trapped in the mountains still thinking that they are the same humans that they were before and awaiting more reinforcements from Neferata that are never ever going to come. So hopefully that's giving you some inspiration towards your own lore. If you've got any questions or you want any help or anything like that please ask away in the comments as well because I do love talking about death lore and in particular flesh eater courts are very close to my heart. It was one of my first armies. But with that aside, let us actually talk about their rules now. So the main thing we're going to be talking about is basically the delusions you can take, my thoughts on them, and which one do I think is the best. So I'm going to have a picture of the delusions as you can see on your screen now, but what I will say is it's only half the page. The other half is talking about battle traits. We've already been through this. We've talked huge in depth of Allegiance Abilities Flesh Eater Courts already in their playlist, like I've already mentioned, you can check that out. But what it does say is that if you do take a delusion, you can't take a Grand Court of what I have mentioned earlier in the video, which makes sense, because the delusions are pretty good. If you could basically take two sub-allegiances, the delusion and a Grand Court, it would seem a bit silly. And to be absolutely honest with you, the armies that you can take that have sub-allegiances, but you don't have to pick them, they're choices if you don't go for a sub allegiance are you just get to pick the command train artifact you want you don't get any other like inherent bonus in general so the flesh courts are quite lucky in my opinion about that so the delusions you get is six to choose from the first one is crusading army 
which allows you to add one to run in charge rolls for friendly flesh eater quartz units. So what this means is you're never failing your free inch charges unless obviously the enemy's debuffing your charge roll. Can't stop that. But if you're now being able to run in charge, like you can make with a Terror Guys, for example, by casting special hosts in a Terror Guys, for example, now you're plus and two to its movement if you like, because you get an extra plus one from the run and the charge. So that's quite nice there. It's also because you're a melee combat army, you need to get into combat a lot of the time. And I will actually just read out a little bit of lore we have there, because it's just a short sentence. So the wicked and impious must be ridden down wherever they are. So it's all about charging down crusade and army, wiping out the land of all traits of evil as part of the delusion, right? So then number two, we have the royal hunt. So it is a great honor to slay the largest quarry in preparation for the feast. So you can reroll hit rolls of one and wound rolls of one for attacks made by friendly flesh eater quartz units that target a monster. So, Obviously, that's pretty good, but it's dependent on what army you're fighting, right? Not every single army has a monster, but I would say most armies do, mainly because either it's, it's gameplay reasons, like well, Beast Corps Raiders as an example, the Ogmore tribes, they're bound to take a lot of monsters. Another flesh eater court army, bound to take a lot of monsters, because how good a Terror Geist is, and lots of other armies in between, but on a more sort of like average playing field, People like to have one monster as a centerpiece in their army. So you're probably going to get one thing. But if there's only like, let's say, one monster in their army, is it really worth it just to get those reroll ones to hit and to wound? <sighs> Again, it's like I say, it's dependent on what you're fighting, but I do think it is more restrictive, I would say, on that. But it's your whole army that gets it at the end of the day. But remember, if you're going like Crypt Horror Heavy as an example, you are already re-rolling your hit rolls. Or if you're going Crypt Ghoul Heavy, you're re-rolling your hit rolls of one if you're presumably within range of your Abhorrence. And the Ghoul King on Zombie Dragon, if you've got the points, can give you those re-rolls to wound as well. So there are other ways to get those. And then we got number three, which is Feast Day. So all members of the court make merry on this day of celebration. Once per turn, you can use the Feed and Frenzy command ability without a command point being spent. I'm just going to level with you guys. This is the best one here. This is what I build my lists around because the Feed and Frenzy ability is insanely good. And just in case you're unaware of what it is, I'm going to quickly read it out now. But it's basically the command ability you get for just being flesh eater courts. And what it is, is Feed and Frenzy. So you can use this command ability after a friendly flesh eater courts unit has fought in the combat phase for the first time and is wholly within 12 inches of a friendly fleshy to court hero or wholly within 18 inches of a friendly fleshy to court hero that is a general if you do so that unit can immediately make a pile move and then attack with all of its many weapons it is armed with for a second time you cannot pick the same unit to benefit from this ability more than once per phase. So obviously, just any of your units of flesh eater courts, pile and tagging twice, is generally very good. Why you often see it on abhorrent ghoul kings on terror guys being used, because that is an insanely good monster, especially when buffed up. If it gets those extra attacks off, it can do insane stuff, and now it's attacking twice, so it's like two terror guys instead of one, and this is one of the best uh, like attacking twice mechanics, because you attack straight away after. So it's not like the enemy gets a chance to hit you back, you're attacking back straight away. A terror guys, as an example, doesn't really get too much affected by its damage table when it takes damage. So that is why it's really good. And your abhorrent ghoul king on a terror guys, remember, is a hero. So will always be within range of himself. So if you're thinking, are oh, just the terror guys, or should I put the ghoul king on top? Put the ghoul king on top, especially if you're going feast day. Like I said, if you want to check out my list building video of Flesh of Course, I've got a list there that I take feast day. I won't go into those details about it now, but basically what I'm also doing is I'm paying for a command point. So that's just another command point I've got in the bank to do feed and frenzy. And I also have the command point you get at the start of each of your turns. And I can use these extra command points or I even have them to just summon units onto the board, can't I? And basically by going with a feast day instead of going for a grand court by picking a delusion, I can pick my command trait and artifact, which I give both to my abhorrent arch region that makes him plus one to cast from his command tree plus one to cast from his artifact and if you want more details about the artifacts command traits go check out the video i reviewed for them in the allegiance species videos for flesh eater courts but you can see by it's giving you that much more freedom also chucking a corpse cut so now that means my abhorrent 
Arch Regent is plus three to cast, and I'm getting a good delusion as well. So that's why I said Flesh Air Courts really do double up if you don't take a Grand Alliance because you're still picking a special ability for your army to be affected by. So that's why I really, really like Feast Day. And then I think it is important though to talk about the others because there could be something we could miss or the meta could change and it could suit for taking a delusion, but it's different to Feast Day, but at the moment that is definitely my favorite one. And then we've got number four, so a matter of honor. The enemy will repent only when their wretched leaders are dead. You can reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made by friendly flesh eater court units that target a hero. If the target is a general, you can reroll wound rolls of one as well. So it really depends when you're going to go after like the generals, because sometimes they're so far in the back of the board, unless you're literally tabling the army, which you can do a lot of the time, flesh eater courts, to be fair. You can't guarantee you'll go against their hero unless they're very a combat effective one. But if they are a combat hero, they may also be a monster. Which if they are, you're better off just going the Royal Hunt. Because you get the bonus against any monster. But then again, if your enemy's got a lot of heroes, obviously this is going to be good. I mean, it's very hard to predict that, obviously, though, if we're thinking about a tournament setting where it's all randomised. But if, for example, you know in that tournament there's going to be arcane places of power where you need to capture objectives with uh, heroes that may be leaders, chances are they may take a few heroes. So, you know, you could plan around it like here with that one. Or if you and your mate are just going to have a game, you already know you're going to play things at arcane places of power, something like that. You think, hmm, it's probably going to bring quite a few heroes. And then you would just go this one because you know you're going to be good at targeting those heroes potentially, but it's more of a tailored thing. And then going on to number five, we have a grand tournament. So you can reroll hit rolls on one for attacks made by friendly flesh eater court heroes other than your general. So that does mean things like your general, if you want to make him the Apron Ghoul King. On Terrorgeist, he's not going to benefit from this. But like I say, I make my Arch Regent and he's on a Bellwind Vortex as well. So he's not really going anywhere. So it's fine that he can't reroll those hit rolls of one. But what I will say is your... Terror Geist, you give it a gruesome bite anyway. Admittedly, unless you take a battalion, you're only getting one mount trait, remember? So it can't be for all your big monsters, as an example there. So the reroll ones that hit could be nice, and you've got more attacks than just that gruesome bite to help you, especially when you're doing um, Feed and Frenzy to go off, so you're making more attacks, more chance to reroll those hit rolls of one. But what I will say here is if you want to go, you know, Crypt Gore Heavy and Crypt Horror Heavy, obviously they're not really going to be affected by this, apart from maybe the hero for the Crypt Gores and the heroes for the Crypt Horrors. Um, but for a lot of your units, you're getting access to reroll ones to hit without too much of a difficulty anyway. And then number six, we have Defenders of the Realm. So you can reroll save rolls of one for friendly fleshier court units that have at least half of their models wholly within their own territory. So a lot of the time where the objectives are at the back of the board in your territory or even just halfway on the board and you just make sure that half your unit is wholly within your range of your territory. Obviously, some battle plans have smaller territories than others, but you can be rerolling ones to save. It's obviously good against melee, but it's going to be good against shooting. There's a heavy shooting meta at the moment. A flesh of your courts really can struggle, so they haven't got too many ways to make the enemy minuses to hit or anything like that. So the thing what this is going to be quite good against, if I just pick out a particular unit, is going to be the Osterarch Bone Reapers Mortec Catapults, those big undead catapults, because they are very good. They're pretty goddamn reliable as well, making sure they hit and wound you, but they have no rend, and your flesh ear courts do not have good saves. Across the board, probably average about five on most of your units. Crypt Ghouls, six. Your heroes, four. So average of about five. And the problem you have there is... They don't really need any rend those catapults because chances are you're not going to save it. But if you're getting that reroll one, it's just going to help you. Look at it as all your units that are within your range of your territory are going to get a Mystic Shield. Problem is though, your Flesh Eater Court army is quite aggressive. That depends on how you want to play it. Obviously, you've got big blocks of Cryptals. Maybe you don't have to be. But I try to take elite stuff. So heavy hitting either Flares, Cryptors, Terror Geist, those sorts of things. And they need to go straight into the enemy. Try and do an alpha charge, if I can't, it'll be a bit like a, a beta charge, basically. But what I will say there is, with that, the Defenders of the Realm isn't going to be much use for me, because I'm now outside my territory. So it really tailors into your playstyle. 
And I don't think I read the little bit of lore we have for that one, so I'll just read it now. The Defenders of the Realm. The Sovereign's Domain must be purge of evil. Or even though I did already say it, I like saying it twice. So, just to say, those are the six we've got there. It's so obviously not a really, really long video, as I can talk for bloody hours, can't I? But what I will say is, I think it's important to look at each single one of them. Feast Day, obviously the best, right? I'm just going to say that, obviously the best. But depending on how the meta changes, maybe the other ones could become better than Feast Day. But I don't think so yet. I think maybe we'll see a new battle tome out before then. But I hope I've explained to you guys the uses of the other ones as well. And not just basically brush past them as some people would review and just go, not even talk about them. I hope I've explained to you where they could be useful and why I think Feast Day is the best and not just say it's the best but actually give you details of how I've used it and also if you want more details on that list because I know some of you are going to ask check out that video as I explain it in there in much more detail um, but yeah that, that's pretty much it and I would say that the delusions they just give you so much freedom because you can go with your command traits and like the command trait I went for for the plus one to cast is um, the dark wizardry and then the one I went for for the uh, royal treasury in those artifacts is going to be the Dermal Robe, as it just gives you that other plus one. Flesh Eater Courts rely so much on getting off their magic to give them so many more buffs that I saw it as essential. And where I like to go blister skin, well, it's good, add two to your movement. I always talk about how good it is to uh, get bonuses to your movement. This is a movement game. You win by your movement, basically in Age of Sigma. But you need your spells, because also your spells can help you with your movement problem as well. And the Flesh Eater Court spells are fantastic, but you don't really get any inherent ways to plus your casting. So you stick an Abhorrent Arch Regent on a Bell and Vortex like I do. He's now casting three spells. He's plus one to a save. He's healing three wounds at the start of every one of your turns. So that means that he's pretty survivable. The other thing is now the range of his spells that are usually wholly within 24 inches are now going to be wholly within 30 inches or any that are wholly within 18 and now wholly within 24, huge, especially when you're terror guys, and all your offensive units are running up the board, so you don't need to worry about being in range of them. He can be next to the Carnal Throne to make sure that he can bring on his unit once per game for free with his summoning for that command point, which is really good, because that one command point you're safe to, and that could be another feeding frenzy, and you're already going to get a feeding frenzy once per turn for free, so that can mean both your terror guys are attacking twice, basically, without spending any command points because you saved one by you know bringing on something summoning by being next to that throne and now your um, abhorrent arch region is plus free to cast like we mentioned because you've got that corpse cart or even give things like lord croak a run for his money so that's why i really really like that there and like i said that's all the details i want to give on that before basically just doing the list building video again but um yeah so with that guys i hope you enjoyed this video i really hope you learned something out of it if you've got any more questions on the flesh of your courts please let me know down below. I'll be happy to answer them best I can, as I do love talking about this army. Also, if you did enjoy this video, I would just kindly ask you guys to please smash that like button, that subscribe button, and that bell notification button you haven't already. Those are three ways to massively support the channel, and they're literally just free clicks. And I know a load of you guys have been doing it lately, and it hasn't gone unnoticed. I really do appreciate that. And it's free for you guys to do and really supports the channel. So I'd appreciate that loads. If you did enjoy the video as well and you think someone else would enjoy it, please share it with them as well. I'm happy for as many people to watch my content as possible. If you think it's going to help that person with their army, I would really like them to get the benefit out of it. So what I do also want to say is a massive shout out again to my patrons who, like I mentioned earlier, my patrons and my YouTube members are the reason why I can continue doing these videos because the amount of time and effort and the money I put into doing the YouTube it doesn't make up for it doing the uh, Patreons and the memberships, but it really does help towards it. And it's a really massive appreciation from myself that I can see from you guys if you want me to really continue this by giving me any support you can. So that is going to be to my Patreons and my YouTube members, like I mentioned, who are going to be my Morgars, like I said, my biggest supporters, and they're all beautiful people. This is going to be Jonathan H, Philco, Bleed Red, and Christopher G. Thank you for your continued support of that tier, guys. You're giving so much support. It really is making a huge difference. And then my vampires, who again massively help support the channel, are going to be Mir, Martin S, Rouse321, David A, Ronnie H, Doug P, and Spare Bear. Thank you for your huge support there as well, guys. And then we've got my Necromancers, which is Jack L, Radiation Riley, AW77, Dice Sargus, Wolf Nick, Michael W, Quad, Cranky Wombat, Christopher F, Christopher C, James S, and Steve T. Thank you all for your collective work there as well. And if you would like to support the channel, 
either click that join button next to the subscribe button, very easy way, you don't need to sign up to Patreon or anything like that, and you can help support the channel straight away, or if you would like to sign up to Patreon, find a link to it at the top of my description down below, even if you just consider giving one dollar a month guys, it really goes straight towards the channel, keep me going and give me the motivation to keep doing this, and to try and help as many people get into Age of Sigma, and to continue their Age of Sigma journey. But with all that aside guys, I'm going to thank you very much for watching this video. Any questions, leave them in the comments. Smash that like, subscribe and bell notification button. And remember until next time to stay safe, wear gloves, wear a mask, stay hygienic. So when we actually can play again, we can get the flesh of your courts on the tables with a delusion maybe. And more importantly than that, remember until next time. That Nick Gash is all. And all is one in the Gash.